motivation. Predictions. Empirical. Deliberation. Biases. Networks. Beliefs. Policy. Fundamental. Cross-disciplinary. Power. Information. Labor. Consumer. Insurance. Modeling. Energy. Disclosure. Variety and assortment. So I do a lot of work on assortment variety and obviously I think that's very important for retailers because one of the big decisions that they have to make is how to put out or merchandise their assortment, their, what products to include, what products to exclude, uh, how to arrange their products, how to get people to buy more in their stores. And so I've done a lot of work on how you can help shape an assortment. I think the bulk of my research at a broad level has been on how firms communicate with investors and how investors respond to those communications. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of a recent project that I, I worked on. Um, there's a general presumption that if firms disclose more to the markets, um, their costs of capital will be less, the amount that they can, the amount that they pay to basically use investors' money. We started from the premise, people disagree about everything. And if they disagree about what something means, they're gonna respond differently and how we sort of think about risk is a function of what we think is going to happen at the firm, but we also think about how people are going to respond in the future to disclosures by the firm. And when it's hard to predict how people would respond to a disclosure, um, it adds risk. So I look at religion, I look at political systems, I look at individuals' beliefs about control, and then I, I'm interested in how those relate to individuals' consumption behaviors. There have been headlines that say, you know, is brand the new religion. So, you know, are these brands taking the place of God? Is it a substitute? Uh, and for some people at certain times, it seems to operate in that fashion, at least on certain dimensions. We spend 17% of our GDP on healthcare, um, and healthcare services in the U.S. are provided within markets. And so my work studies the impact of different market structures and regulatory structures on the performance of healthcare providers. Um, and that performance is going to be measured by costs and quality and access to care. So literally my work analyzes is a life and death issue. It studies how market interactions affect life and death outcomes. I investigate the reasons uh, people engage in, in actions that benefit the public good at a sometimes substantial cost to themselves. So I analyze questions, uh, decisions ranging from donating to charity, to registering as an organ donor, to exerting costly effort as a volunteer. And I, what I find is that some of the strongest motivations of those kinds of, of actions are social forces. My research looks at strategic consumers. These are the expert shoppers who somehow always manage to find the best deals around. And strategic consumers, they basically have a certain bag of tools, a bag of tricks. For example, when shopping for clothing, they know exactly um, when it pays off to wait for clearance markdowns. Ultimately, I'm interested in understanding the impact of strategic consumer behavior on firms' performance. Broadly, what I'm trying to do is to understand the behavior of the labor market. Uh, and, and on top of that, I'm trying to understand how we can influence that behavior uh, by using different policies. One thing that is very uh, current in the news all over the place is that the unemployment rate in the United States is very high, right? It's over 9%, and it's been persistently high for a few years right now. So the obvious question is, is there something we can do about it, right? Is, the, is there a set of policies that the government could, could use to try to lower the unemployment rate? I'm involved in a, a huge project to um it's a forecasting tournament to, uh, that's designed to help people make better predictions about future events. This is a large set of events, world events, military, political, economic, health, social, technological. Uh, what kinds of questions should you be asking? Given you have a large set of forecasts, how should you aggregate those to come up with a prediction? Um, and then how do you communicate probabilistic information to policymakers and other people who need to deal with the uncertainty and um, adapt their decisions accordingly? So I do research on the effect of government programs and government policies on 
the behavior and economic well-being of individuals and firms. In a recent project with Fiona Scott Morton, I looked at the effect of Medicare Part D, a new government program on pharmaceutical prices. And what we found was that this large government program actually led to a big reduction in pharmaceutical prices and an, an increase in the utilization of prescription drugs. So I'm interested in a wide range of applications. I've looked at things ranging from detecting changes in the volatility of a stock index to describing human motion to most recently looking at the time varying functional connectivity in the brain as somebody sees a word and is processing that word. Um, so really the general theme is just that there's data with some temporal structure and it's trying to develop models that, that can somehow describe that data. One of the common characteristics in, uh, for example, labor contracts or any type of payment contracts between two people that, in, that are engaged over a long-term relationship is the escalation of pay. Now, why is that? Naively speaking, that doesn't make much economic sense, but obviously there's something going on economically that's driving this phenomenon that you see in virtually every single type of contracting relationship. And so that's something that I've tried to uh, explain in my research. What we do is um, take a real world scientific problem and um, do a um, model it in a, using a quantitative model and then apply statistical tools. And if those tools don't exist, um, invent statistical tools to make sense out of data and to try to clean information from, from data sets. I am an economist by training and I study health insurance markets. So one, one concern that we were interested in, in during the healthcare reform debate is health insurance premiums. And one question is how do insurers think about setting those premiums? And so that's one question that my research aims to answer. And more broadly, I want to think about how insurers not only set prices, but also decide what markets to enter, how much to advertise, and what kinds of consumers to, to market to. Social capital is something that people think it matters, but we do, they don't really know how to get a value out of it. As opposed to you know, you get it as, as opposed to intellectual property or intellect or education, right? You know, you get to go to school, you get you have a bachelor degree, and you get a better, uh, you know certain pay scale. But what about your social capital, right? How do you actually get returns from your social capital? So my research focuses on the psychology underlying judgments and decisions. So. You know, how is it that people arrive at a particular judgment? How is it that they arrive at a particular decision? And I mostly focus on understanding situations under which decisions err. So when do decision makers get it wrong? When are they likely to be systematically biased? What kinds of interventions are likely to, to improve their decisions? And what interventions are unlikely uh, to work to improve decisions? So I look at those situations where we're making those big, important, consequential decisions, such as choosing a house, or choosing who to date, or uh, choosing even a physician services. And what I find out is that when we're making those big, important uh, decisions, we actually want to feel that we're investing a lot of effort. Now, the reason why we do that is we find that people link between effort and good outcomes. We believe that by investing enough effort, this should lead us to a, a good outcome. And this might be the case in many situations, however, not necessarily, right? In some cases, we could just receive a very good alternative, a very good option, and we don't really need to work that hard. I look at the employment and how it's changed over time. And the way I look at that, at least right now, is I look at organizational practices that affect uh, sort of human relations outcomes or employment outcomes. So specific, I look at company-sponsored retirement plans and how those have changed over time and how that kind of tells us something about the way employment more generally has changed over time. On the one hand, I look at how does information, like say disclosure of companies, affects capital market prices, cost of, cost of capital mainly. The other side of the research that I do uh, usually sort of considers um, as I said, information in organizations themselves. Um, basically there I look at incentives of different people in the organization. I work in particular in energy policy management. So there's a lot of discussion about what are the different targets we should have 
in terms of renewable energy or carbon emissions, green technologies in general. How the question I'm trying to solve, and I think it's very important, is trying to understand how are the governments supposed to intervene and take us to to the to this new paradigm with the, the technologies that are coming online now.